All right, so this is the last day, day 15 of the second packet in the math section. So we're starting off with a task and it is related to exponents, just like the previous two days. And we have to complete the table and answer a couple questions. So let's take a look at what we have now. Um, so we have side length. So we have some sort of figure and it tells us it's a square and a cube. Okay, so we're talking about area and volume. So the side length is given. So we have the first example is x. So just picture this, okay, a square, x and x, x times x, that's the area, which is x squared. Okay, so that's what we have here. And then if it's a cube, okay, we just add a third dimension, and then that's going to be the side is, third side is x. So let me write that it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so let's put the, that's the depth, and then let's put that here. So x times x times x, which is x to the third power. So using exponents, we're just simplifying that repeated multiplication as an exponent expression. All right, so then they give us um, a new side length of 2x. Okay, so what's the area? What's the volume? So 2x times 2x is multiply the numbers. So 2 times 2 is 4, and then x squared. Okay, and then volume is 2x times 2x times 2x, and that equals 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8x cubed. All right? And then, again, the same thing with 3x is the new side length. The area will be 9x squared. The volume is 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3 is 27, x to the third power. Okay. Again, we don't know what x is, but if we did, we could figure out the actual units. Okay, so B says, describe how the area and volume are each affected if the side length is doubled. So the side length, if the side length is doubled, so that would be this middle column, so this is doubled, right? Doubled is times 2. So 2 times x is 2x. So what happens to the area and what happens to the volume? What did happen to the area? So we look at the numbers. So we have x squared in both of them. Okay, let me see if we can highlight that. So x squared. So that stayed the same, right? So the thing that changed was the 4. So the area... The area increased by four, I'm just going to say four times, or times four. The area increased by a factor of four. Okay, anything like that, so four times. And what about the volume? Okay, the volume, we can see the x cubed stayed the same, but what changed is the eight. So the volume, the volume, oops, the volume increased by a, I'm just going to say this, a factor of 8. So it's 8 times greater, and you can also say that, 8 times greater, and the area is 4 times greater. So if the side is twice as big, the area is four times as big, and the volume is eight times as big. So now, if the side length is tripled, so the area is nine times larger, the volume is 27 times larger or greater. Okay, so that's just based off of those numbers that we saw in our table. Okay, let's continue. And again, just more practice with exponents. Um, this is power of a power. You can go back 
to the previous days and see the table uh, that has the rule on it. But here's some examples that kind of shows us what we're doing here. And um, we actually looked at this on the previous day. And what we have to do is we multiply those two exponents. So five, in this case, five times eight, that's how we get 40. And if we have multiple bases, Okay, make sure we have exponents. So we're going to multiply each of those exponents by the exponent on the outside of the parentheses. So for the 5, the base of 5, we have 1 times 8, that's 8. For A, we have 2 times 8, which is 16. And for B, we have 5 times 8, which is 40. And they show you how that works, like the expanded form. Um, and that's how we get that kind of shortcut. Again, this is all review. Um, there's no need to go through every single problem. All right. So let's just choose a couple, um, maybe number two. So the base is nine, that stays the same. And then those exponents, we're gonna multiply. So seven times two, which is 14. So that's our new exponent and that's it. Okay, let's try another one with multiple bases. I'm just gonna write them out, five, G, and K. Okay, so there's no exponent, make sure you put one. So that's a one, so one times four is four. G, it's an 8 inside, so 8 times 4 is 32. And the K, 12 times 4, which is 48. Again, we're not using calculators. We're just writing these out. We're simplifying using rules of exponents. Okay, number 6. So that looks interesting. Um, I believe it's a typo. It probably should have been 7W to the 7th K. And then outside would be that exponent of 3, perhaps. But it's not, so we'll, we'll evaluate it as it is. So it's just a multiplication. So there's no exponent by itself like this outside of the parentheses. So it's just a multiplication problem. So this would be 7w to the 7th, k to the 3rd. It's just multiplying. We're just rewriting it without the parentheses. And that's it. Uh, again, that's definitely a typo because it doesn't fit with any of these other problems. So we'll take it as it is because I'm not sure of the intent of that question. So that'll be good enough. Okay, again, another rule of four going back to linear equations. Um, I did one in the previous video, so I'm not going to do as much this time. But again, I will get you started. Um, you're going to have to come up with a description and then um, graph it and make a table. So first of all, let's make sure we understand how this is written. This is in slope-intercept form. And the slope is this, it's just a negative sign, but it's really a, a negative 1. So I'm going to put that here. Negative 1 is our slope. And then the y-intercept is a positive 9, or 9. Okay, so thinking about how you're going to start this off with your words. Um, remember, the starting point is our y-intercept, or 9. So I have 9 cookies and the slope is going down this time so it's a negative one so i had nine cookies at the beginning of the day and every hour i gave one away to my friends all right so that's it i mean your, your rate of change is a negative one so it's decreasing by one in this case every hour but you can make up anything you want as long as you talk about the starting point of nine and then how it's changing which is decreasing by one Okay, so our graph, I will help you because, um, again, graphing is super important. So we need to make sure that we're doing it correctly. So let's label this with numbers first. And since they're small numbers, I'm just going to start with um, counting by ones for both the x and y axes. Okay, and then we're going to put a point at the y-intercept. That's where we start. So that's here at 9 this time. And then we're going to go down. So our slope is negative 1. We need to make it into a fraction. So negative 1 over 1. That means down, down 1, over 1. So down 1, over 1. Down 1, over 1. Down 1, over 1. And we keep going as far as we want to go. But once we have an idea, then we can draw our line to connect. And then when you make your table, you use those points that we found on our graph. All right? And at least three, you can write them all if you want. So this is at four comma five and so on. Okay, so that's it for this packet. Um, 
and we will start the next packet shortly.